We made it to week six. I'm celebrating all God has done these past five weeks, but I'm also sad that it's our last week together. I've so enjoyed the time we've spent with each other and with Kayla. Thank you for carving out time during this busy season and spending it here with us. We pray that you've seen God at work and felt closer to Him because of the time you spent with Him in His Word. Our final word for the study is love. It's really my favorite. A few years ago, I wrote a Bible study on 1 John entitled, I Am Loved. It was during the writing of that book that I truly came to believe with all my heart God loved me unconditionally. I didn't have to earn his love or behave in a certain way to keep his love. 1 John 3, 1 says, See what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should become children of God. That is who we are. God loved us so much, he sent his son Jesus to walk among us and to die for us. And there is nothing, nothing we can ever do to make God love us more than he does now or less than he does now. His lavish love is forever and always ours. But because of the world we live in, we will have days we feel less loved or like we don't deserve God's love. Maybe a harsh word we've spoken or a selfish decision we've made, or we feel angry with God because it doesn't feel like he sees or even hears us. Kayla, what can we do to remind ourselves of God's unconditional and lavish love? Friends, it has been such an honor to spend Advent together with you. And I wanna end our time together this week as you prepare to walk into Christmas Day by reading a quote from C.S. Lewis's book, Miracles. Um, you can find this quote on page 126 of your guide, but the imagery of this quote has stuck with me from the first moment I read it, and it really helps me visualize God's love for me. C.S. Lewis writes, in the Christian story, God comes down, down from the heights of absolute being into time and space, down into humanity, but he goes down to come up again and bring the whole ruined world up with him. One may think of a diver, first reducing himself to nakedness, then glancing in midair, then gone with a splash, vanished, rushing down through green and warm water into black and cold water, down through increasing pressure into the death-like region of ooze and slime and old decay, then up again, back to color and light, his lungs almost bursting, till suddenly he breaks the surface again, holding in his hand the dripping, precious thing that he went down to recover. Friend, you are that thing. He left heaven and came to earth. He was born and placed in straw for you. And every part of the Christmas story was handcrafted by God out of love for you. You know, someone recently told me that there are your feelings and then there's reality. And sometimes those two things aren't the same. So listen closely. Even if you don't feel loved right now, the reality is that you are. You are loved more than you could ever realize. And sometimes we have to let that truth boss around our hearts, don't we? I am loved. Repeat it. So whether we feel it on any given day or not, let's walk into this Christmas, or goodness, let's walk into 2022 believing and living like the loved children we are. He is crazy about you, and nothing proves it better than Christmas. Jesus was born just so he could die, and he did it for you. This Christmas, I want to echo the words of Paul in Ephesians 3, 17 through 19, and I want this to be our prayer over you. I pray that you would have the power to grasp, the strength to comprehend how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ for you. And I pray that you would know this love that surpasses knowledge, 
that you might be filled to the measure with the fullness of God. For our final moment of reflection, I just want to encourage you to sit quietly with one short verse this week. That verse is 1 John 4, 9. 1 John 4, 9. Just read it. Speak the words out loud. Maybe you can take a moment to reflect or to color or highlight key words or jot down some thoughts, but let God's love speak to you through his word. And then walk into this Christmas knowing that you are loved more than you could possibly know. Merry Christmas, everyone. Kayla, thank you for the time, effort, study, and prayer you put into pointing to the promise and our messages these past few weeks. We're grateful for you and your wisdom. As we close our time together, friends, remember you are loved, so loved that the Lord sent down his one and only son for you and for me. It's a beautiful love story, and there's so much more to that love story that God has been writing since the beginning of time. He's waiting patiently for us to daily accept his invitation to discover the rest of the love story with him. Let me close us in prayer. Father, we love you so much. Thank you for the season of Christmas. Keep our eyes focused on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, the one who is our savior, the one who is the King of kings and Lord of lords. We love you, Lord. We give you this Christmas season. Open our eyes to see the places that we can love others with your love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. From all of us at Proverbs 31, Merry Christmas. And remember, when you know the truth and live the truth, it truly changes everything.